I think it's fair to say that April was a milestone month for private spaceflight, as in addition to SpaceX achieving the first successful landing of a first stage booster on a drone ship, and publishing updated launch payloads for the Falcon 9, which are over double what they were in 2010, the company announced a planned uncrewed mission to Mars, currently scheduled for 2018. This mission proposal, known as Red Dragon, has been floating around since at least 2011, and interestingly enough it actually served as one of the initial inspirations for Mars One's original architecture for modular capsule-based landings on the Red Planet. And of particular interest to note here is that SpaceX is actually pushing ahead with this mission from their own funding. When Red Dragon, at least when it was originally conceived of, would have been a NASA Discovery mission funded by the Space Agency for launch in 2022. So what are the implications of this proposed mission to Mars One's plans? Well, if SpaceX does manage to make it to Mars in 2018 or even 2020, then it will demonstrate an impressive leap forward in entry, descent and landing technology by landing a capsule over seven times the mass of the Curiosity rover. This would validate many of the technologies, such as retro rocket deceleration, that Mars One intends to eventually use for its human missions, and it would finally prove that a private company can successfully land on Mars. Indeed, it also means that some of the technology development research Mars One was looking to finance themselves may no longer even be required, since SpaceX is doing that independently out of their own funds. Now, personally, I would prefer that this mission goes ahead in the 2020 launch window, rather than the currently scheduled 2018 window, mainly because this would give sufficient time for scientific payloads to be developed to go aboard the Red Dragon, because in many ways it seems like a shame not to utilise the one-ton payload capacity to do some fascinating science on the Red Planet if you're going there anyway, for a potentially, well, I mean, Red Dragon would cost about $500 million, so why not do science whilst you're there? Now, it's important to note that the 2018 window is certainly doable, but it leaves very little flexibility with regards to the timing for many of SpaceX's missions. For instance, SpaceX currently has scheduled the Falcon Heavy debut launch for November of this year, and the first orbital test flight of the Dragon 2 for around May of 2017. And if either of these missions slips, then that pretty much means that the 2018 launch window will probably not be able to met, be met for the Red Dragon. Now, given that the Falcon Heavy has been delayed many times since 2013 already, and the Dragon 2 has also suffered from a few delays, it means that SpaceX will really have to try and avoid any more delays throughout 2016 if they want to still meet the 2018 launch window. So I do suspect they probably will have to move for the 2020 launch window. Now, the Red Dragon mission is certainly fascinating and I could talk about it for a very long time, so what I'll actually do is I'll put together a dedicated video in about two weeks' time where I'll go into many of the technical details about how the Red Dragon mission would work, so keep an eye out for that in the near future. But overall, I would say that this is a great step towards fulfilling Mars One and SpaceX's mutual goal of establishing a lasting human presence on Mars in the near future. And given that Elon Musk has stated beforehand that he's happy to sell a dragon to Mars One if they can raise the money, this speaks to a positive future for both companies and for Mars exploration in general. Now as to what Mars One have been up to lately, in addition to preparations for the big VIP event in June, they recently released a new Mars 100 video profile featuring Russian candidate Anastasia Stefanova, which you can check out just over there. I'm also pleased to say that Anastasia has just been selected in the last month to take part in a seven-person international crew as part of the Mars Society's Mars 160 Analog Mars mission, coming up later in this year and then in the beginning of 2017. Now indeed, many of the candidates have been involved in very exciting projects over the past month. Just to give you a few examples, American candidate Oscar Matthews has been taking part in NASA's 10th Human Exploration Research Analog Mission, which simulates a 30-day crewed mission to an asteroid. There's also American candidate and aerospace engineer Hampton Black, who has taken part in Project Possum's astronaut training program, which prepares its trainees to conduct 
research on noctilucent clouds aboard X-Cores Lynx spaceplane when it starts its flights in the next few years. And I do also have to give a special shout out and congratulations to planetary scientist and Mars One candidate Zachary Gallegos, who is now officially a science team collaborator aboard the Curiosity Rover's Mars Science Laboratory mission. In addition, many candidates have been doing a fantastic job speaking at schools and events around the world. And so as usual, for this month's education and outreach highlight, I would like to give a shout out to one particular candidate. And this month, it's Polish candidate Mikolaj Zelensky, who recently presented at a science fair in Dubai. Many of us are also arranging meetups amongst ourselves in preparation for the team building and group challenge aspects of the next rounds of Mars One selection process. Just this past month, I had the chance to meet up with Australian candidate Josh Richards, along with my fellow British candidates Claire Whedon and Hannah Earnshaw in London. After this, Josh flew over to the east coast of the United States, where he met up with American candidates Dan Carey and Leila Zucker, with many more meetups planned over the next few months. The next big meetup we have planned will be at the 2016 Mars One VIP event on June 3rd in Amsterdam, which myself and a number of the other candidates will be attending. I'm certainly looking forward to having the chance to meet Mars One's advisors, stakeholders and investors at the event, where Mars One will offer updates on their progress to date and the next steps moving forward with the project. This does mean though that I will be travelling at the time that I would usually be filming my next update, so instead I'll be pushing that one back to the 11th of June, that way I can include any of the latest news and updates that are revealed at the VIP event in that next video and keep you updated with the latest progress. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly updates on the Mars One project on the first Saturday of each month, as well as explorations in planetary science, astrophysics and human spaceflight. This month's feature video is a short documentary examining Mars One candidate and planetary scientist Zachary Gallegos' ambition of travelling to Mars. Next time, I'll be taking an in-depth look at SpaceX's Red Dragon mission, examining the technicalities of how the mission could proceed. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter, subscribe and comment down below to join the conversation.